Hello and welcome to the BBC News Report. We are reporting from Broughton Hall School where we found, scripted and recorded our own stories. Today's first story is the horse meat scandal. This is Charlotte and I'm Alex and we're reporting for the BBC School News Report on the horse meat scandal. Recently there has been uproar due to the discovery of the contamination of beef when horse meat was found in products labelled beef. They have been discovered a lot of horse meat disguised in products in supermarkets, for example, Tesco's everyday value frozen burgers, as does beef lasagna and co-op's quarter pounds of burgers. This has caused sales to plunge by 43%. However, the bigger scandal is the Finder's beef lasagna, which has been revealed to contain up to 100% horse meat. Shockingly, in Burger King's beef products, the horse meat could possibly contain a cancer-causing drug. On the other hand, the McDonald's brands have had full tests at which have revealed no horse meat in any products. So there's some information about the scandal so far. Thank you for the whole high school because what I want to know is the meat in school dinners also contaminated. I asked a few students from the school what they thought and if they would continue to eat the school dinners if they knew it contained horse meat. <laughs> if it was revealed that there was horse meat in the school dinners, would you continue to eat it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's just horse and as long as you know that there's no bad drugs like they've given the horses medicine, as long as you know that the horse meat is safe to eat. Yeah, if we've been eating it already, it shouldn't matter if we carry on. Because it tastes just the same, it's just like eating anything else and if we don't know, if we didn't know and it just tastes yeah. the same, then it's not really affecting us. Just like eating pigs instead of horse. Yeah. I mean, I suppose, if, as well as they told you that it was horse, you could still eat it to be like, try and horse, try and see what it tastes like. <laughs> I think I'd eat um, school dinners if, if, they, if we found out they had horse meat in them because, like, why didn't they tell us in the first place and I like to know what I'm eating. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't mind because horse meat, like, we've been eating it for a while now and it doesn't really make a difference to anything. Those are some students' views and some insight into the problem so far. But would you eat it? This has been Alex and Charlotte reporting for BBC School News Report. Thank you for that. Our next story is about body image. Hello, I'm Georgia, presenting live from Broughton Hall High School in Liverpool on the issue of body image and how people, especially young girls, are affected by this. The media have a large effect on this, as do fellow peers. Here is my fellow people interviewing our school nurse on this matter. Over to you. Hello, this is Lauren with our school nurse. Are you aware of the issue of eating disorders in our school and other schools' pupils of our age? Yes. Um, what is your opinion on the matter of eating disorders? My opinion is a very serious condition which is um, quite, di uh, it's quite difficult to diagnose. It's, quite, it's very hard to treat because it's, 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 um, it's a mental illness and it's quite, people are quite secretive and at the end of the day it's like a lot of things. It's, the person themselves needs to um, acknowledge they have a problem before you can treat it. But it's a massive problem, it's, uh, especially in um, younger people. Um, and the best, uh, uh, the best way to treat it is early diet in their lives. A lot of girls or, or boys, even um, perfectionists, a lot of sports people are quite yeah. often um, have uh, eating disorders. The perfectionists, they want to be the best, they want to do everything right, and that's um, taking control again of your life. Um, and some girls, it is about might start off wanting to be slim like the celebrities, and it gets out, it spirals out of control. It's hard to manage. Thanks for that. Now here are some of our our people showing some facts about eating disorders. Fifteen percent of anorexics die. Two thirds of girls between ten to fifteen have tried dieting. By the age of seven, many children have decided it's not okay to be fat. Six out of ten sufferers don't recover. It is estimated that 10% of people with eating disorders are anorexic. 40% are bulimic. A suggestion is 1.6 million people in the UK are affected by eating disorders. There is no stereotypical age bracket on people with anorexia. 67% of young girls think they need to lose weight. 85 to 95% of anorexic sufferers are female. Thanks for listening. Now back to the studio. 
Thank you for that report, it was very interesting. Now on to a report of our healthy eating in our school. Good afternoon, I'm Michelle Robert. Today's report will be about healthy school eating, which has been a major issue for the past couple of years. Schools have been changing their meals and adding more healthy foods to their menu. We have interviewed brought on all high school students and a few staff on their opinion and food being served. Over to Diana. Here with me, two students from Bruton High School, here to share their opinion on their school's menu. So what do you think about the food? I think the food is really healthy and looks great when they're presenting it and the prices are really good as well. So did you stay on since lower school? Yeah, I, we came in year 7 we stayed until 6th form. Yeah. So do you prefer the, the food in lower school or the upper? Yeah, I personally prefer the, school, the school's food in lower school because it has more, it has a salad bar and we have choices of our sandwich. We choose what goes in the sandwich and I think that, that was really good. And we had the fruit bar as well where you could just pick what food you want and I thought that was really good so. Yeah, I disagree. I definitely prefer the 611 just because it's more of a better environment with the canteen as well because the space to sit down but also the food itself is just more like variety and it's just healthier and but at the same time you have your options of like your chips and stuff but in the lower school we have to wait till Fridays for chips so I prefer the old school food. And also in the new school it's open all, all day in the lower school, till you open up break lunch, so I guess that's better. But I prefer the food low down the school. So, would you change everything about it? Not really. No, if anything, the thing that most people complain about is prices, but I think they're quite reasonable considering the food they get. Okay. Alright, that's about it then. Thank you guys. Thank you. So, you have it. Two students from Bottom High School giving us their reviews, a bit of mixture, and that's it. Back to you, Michelle, in the studio. In conclusion, Broughton or High School have a high reputation in healthy school eating. Thank you. I agree that our school does have a good healthy eating, but it is a bit expensive. Um, our next report is going to the micromedicine. Good afternoon. I'm Rebecca reporting for the BBC School News Report. Recently, scientists have discovered a tiny blood testing device which sits under the skin. It sends instant results to your doctor and your mobile phone. Here is Abby for more information. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm here at Alderhey Hospital where this new device could be used in the future. It can check up to five different substances in the blood and sends the data to the doctor using radio wave technology. It has been designed to enter your body using a needle into the intestinal tissue right under the skin of the abdomen, legs or arms. The, there it, will con it can stay there for months without needing to be changed or removed. It has already been tested on animals, and t scientists say that it can be it can reliably test cholesterol and glucose and many other substances in the blood. However, this extraordinary equipment will be tested on intense care patients and those who get repeated blood tests. Here is Sinead. Thank you, Zabby. I am here with Miss Andrebus, a teacher at Broughton Hall High School. Um, Miss, do you think this new device will be useful? Yeah, I think any advances in technology that help people are really useful. And do you think it should be used for everyone or just people who need blood tests frequently? Yeah, I just think if people need them frequently, it stops the whole process of having to put a needle in every time. And some people don't like that, so it would make it easier for them. Thank you. Back to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Sinead. The Under the Skin Blood Testing Device is a brilliant invention that has the potential to help millions of people all over the world. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Thank you. That sounds really painful. <laughs> Our last report is going to be on the devastating news of the girls' lab breakup. Ten years in the music industry and it seems now that girls' lab have been around forever. They are a huge part of this generation's childhood. They are now Britain's most successful girl group with 20 consecutive top 10 singles. Our army of fans and followers have been supporting them every step of the way. It's faster than nine when the five girls took a break, which was going to be just one year long. They came back late in 2012. And early in 2013, they set off on their road of the 10 The Hits tour, giving the fans the illusion that this wasn't the end and in fact just the beginning of a new era. However, last night the girls performed their last ever gig as a band in the Echo Arena, Liverpool. The arena was crammed with fans in tears but hoping that this wasn't the Although, end. Although, this morning the girls took to Twitter to announce their split, saying, Dear Louders, we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts thank you. This tour has been an amazing experience and the perfect chance to say thank you for being on this journey with us through a decade. 
It has far exceeded any of our dreams, and we hope we are forever your inspiration and your reminder that dreams really do glitter. Your love and support will stay with us forever, but we have now come to the end of our incredible time together. Love you lots. This caused hysteria within the fan base. Thousands of younger fans went to school in an emotional state. Over to an interview with some of their biggest fans. What's your opinion on Gaza last but not? Um, well, I've been a fan since like um, the first few years, and like I've been to like signings and tours and stuff, so it's quite emotional. Like you can have it, that like it's it's all finished and stuff. And you're one of Gaza's last biggest fans. She was at the front row of the last show. So can you describe what the atmosphere was like? It was amazing. Like it was full, and everyone was crying so emotional. It was the best night ever. Do you think that the news that you received this morning about them splitting up, did that wreck the night for you? Not no, I can wreck that night. I mean, I was at the front of my favourite band's gig and but it's perfect. Do you think that other fans will have the same idea? Do you think other fans will think that they've wrecked the shows or do you think that they'll still stand by them? I mean, the good fans will obviously say it's stand by them. I mean, I've been a fan for 10 years and I'm going to stand by them no matter what. And even if we don't get back together, I still think that most of the fan base will still be there. Okay, thank you. Girls allowed to touch the nation's heart and we wish them the best in the future. Thank you for watching Broughton Hall School News Report. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as we've enjoyed making it. Goodbye. Bye.